Hey guys, it's Coach Murray again. Um, working on our second of our final three digital citizenship lessons. Um, we're going to start this today from my daughter's playroom. Um, it's a little chilly outside. It rained yesterday, so the weather kind of dampened my, my outdoor mood for the moment. So we're going to come to you live, like I said, from her playroom. So we're indoors today. Um, hopefully you guys um, completed the assignment from, from Monday or Tuesday, depending on if you're a Black or a Gold Day class. Um, and again, if you have any questions about any of that material, please feel free to email me, call me, text me, um, uh, send me a message in Google Class, and you know, I'll be happy to answer any of those questions for you. Um, and several of you have asked some questions about some of those items. Um, and, and also, don't forget, um, I did put out a... a disclaimer on Google Classroom that for right now only, and it's while we are doing social distancing, um, right now I'm allowing you multiple times to complete your quizzes. All right. So what that means is if you don't do so well on one of those quizzes, then you have another opportunity opportunity to do so. So once we get back to school, that opportunity is, is going to be cut off. So at, at that point, if you've not done any of the work at that point, um, you're, you're going to only have that one opportunity again once we get back to school. So please, please, please take advantage of this really good opportunity that I'm giving you. Um, so for today, here's our second lesson. This one's called Cyberbullying, Crossing the Line. Um, now, we, we've kind of touched on cyberbullying a little bit, um, and, I, and I think you guys have a, a fairly good knowledge of what cyberbullying is. You know, in real life, if, if you're just talking about the term bullying, that's when somebody is showing, so, showing power over somebody else, showing a little bit of authority because they're bigger, they have a um, higher status, they're smarter, um, you know, for whatever those kind of reasons. And the difference between bullying and cyberbullying is it's the same things as what a bully does in real life, it's just it's going to be done digitally. And a lot of times, um, it's going to be through means of social networking. Um, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Snapchat, all those different types of social media that you guys have. Uh, there will be cyberbullying done on social medias that have yet to be created at this time. But, you know, it's, it's going to be good and understandable for you guys to learn the dangers behind cyberbullying because nobody deserves to be treated uh, less equally than anybody else, regardless of gender, race, religion, anything like that. Um, everybody deserves to be treated fairly, uh, deserves to be treated respectfully, and it's just, you know, you got to make sure that you're taking those right steps and those precautions. So, if you take a look at our essential question, what we're looking at today is, when does inappropriate online behavior cross the line to cyberbullying? and what can you do about it. Um, you know, there may be some circumstances where you may not be the person who is um, intentionally trying to cyberbully somebody, but you might see that. You might know somebody who is cyberbullying somebody else, and, you know, if you're, if you're trying to help that victim um, or, or tell the cyberbully to stop, you know, you're, you're, being, you're being aggressive, you are making a good positive attempt to... Um, try to help that person out. Now, if you're sitting back and doing nothing about it, it's almost just as bad as being that cyber bully um, anyway. So, you know, try to make sure to take the right steps and, and that are in place there. So, if you will, scroll down to your part one. We've got some introductory vocabulary like we normally do. Um, you have harassing, you have deceiving, you have flaming, and hate speech. Um, all four of those are, are terms that you've possibly have heard of before, but um, take a few minutes, look those words up. Um, so go ahead and pause the video at this point, and when you are back and ready, we'll take a look at those. Okay, so hopefully you've had a couple of minutes to take a look and define what those terms are. So before we move on, let's kind of uh, discuss what those terms mean. Um, the first word you have is harassing. Um, harassing can can be in many different forms, but you know according according to what you looked up in Google, most likely um, harassing is the action of subjecting uh, someone to aggressive pressure or intimidation. Um, 
Harassing means you are constantly annoying, constantly pestering, constantly getting on somebody's nerves um, to a point that it makes somebody else angry, upset. It sparks an emotion out of somebody. Um, and, and that's... And those are the kind of the telltale signs of, of bullying, um, tiptoeing on cyberbullying, some of those issues. So um, harassing is never a good thing to do. Um, you know, even if you have a younger brother and sister, you know, sometimes you might think, oh, I'm the older one. I get to have all this authority and power over my sibling, but still not the right thing to do. And I can say that because I'm the older sibling <laughs> in my family, too. I've got a younger brother who's two or three younger than me. Um, your next word is deceiving. Now, deceiving is a term um, that you guys sometimes can, can see very easily in your own classroom. Uh, deceiving um, is to cause someone to believe something is not true, um, typically to gain a personal advantage over. So deceiving is basically um, telling somebody one thing and then having a completely different objective in mind. Um, so you're not being fully honest with somebody. You're trying to gain something out of it, whether whether it's um, a position of power um, or to just to try to gain something from somebody. So uh, dece being, being deceitful is, is not necessarily a, a good thing, and that's not a person that you want to become. Um, our next word is flaming, and f flaming typically means... Um, you, you might hear of it um, used in the terms like as a flame war. Now, a flame war is... One person is texting another person, and where the flaming comes in is it's all in capital letters. Um, it's the, the emojis have been a very, very effective tool to use in the digital world because a lot of times when somebody sends you a text message, you can't really read their emotion involved with it. Um, they, could, they could say a simple sentence like, I'll be right there, or you could interpret that sentence as, I'll be right there, or I'll be right there. You know, so it really just kind of depends on how somebody is saying something. Now, uh, one of the ways that you can tell that somebody is mad is when they send you a text message in all capital letters. For example, mom and dad tell you to be home at 9 o'clock at night and it's 9.30, so you receive a text message in all capital letters, where are you? Okay, flaming, all right, great example of that. And then our final term is hate speech. Um, and that one's kind of self-explanatory. It's just, it's speech that's either written or spoken in a very hateful, derogatory, hurtful manner to somebody. And, and, and where, would, where are you going to see hate speech typically? On social media, through a text message, um, any, any kind of form of digital media that you and your friends are going to share. So um, keep all those terms in mind. Those are very important terms to kind of deal with with cyberbullying. And, you know, those, like I said, those are kind of things that you want to avoid. You don't want to become that mean-spirited person. People want to be able to look up to you, to trust you, um, and, and for you to be a good person and be a good friend. Okay, at this time, if you will go ahead and scroll down to Section 2. All right, Section 2... Um, this is going to require you to watch a video. Um, it's about. It's called Stacy's Story, When Rumors Escalate. Um, now, in our last lesson, we talked about rumors, and rumors are, it's just gossip. It's stuff that are spread around like wildfire. Um, even in the last lesson, um, um, a good, good scenario was playing the telephone game where you whisper into somebody's ear, and they continue to whisper around in a circle until it gets back to the, to the original person. Um, Rumors are just, it's, it's false information. You don't have any proof of it, um, any claim to evidence. It's just one, what one person said and one person repeated. Um, so take a minute, watch this video, and then um, we'll take a look at some of these questions that go along with the video. Okay, and we're back. Um, so, after watching this short video, it wasn't very long, right at about three minutes, um, Stacy had, had made a comment, just a very innocent comment on social media, and all of a sudden, things exploded. So, uh, let's take a look, we'll, we'll, we'll go through these questions together, and I'll, I'll try to answer them with you if you had any, any problems or issues with it. Um, first question was, why did the girls start to harass and threaten Stacy online in the first place? Alright, so if you didn't get the answer from the video. Um, essentially, Stacy made a comment 
um, to a boy. Well, the boy had a girlfriend, and the girlfriend noticed that a comment was made, and all of a sudden we just had some girl drama. Um, apparently this girl has a claim to this boy to where he is not allowed to speak to any other girls, or any other girls are allowed to speak to him. Um, I'll go ahead and say this. Boys, if you have a girlfriend like that, dump them. Girls, if you act like that, stop it. That's not nice <laughs> in any form or fashion. And even if the situations were were reversed, okay, if if the girl had a comment made made to her about um, from another boy, boys don't act like that. Girls don't act like that. Okay, you don't want to be any kind of a part of a relationship that has to be um, that controlling. So. Don't act like that in the first place, but the answer to number one essentially is going to be because she made an innocent comment on social media. That was it. Um, second part, when do you think the girl's behavior crossed the line? Um, you know, it, it's one thing to have an argument between two people, all right, but the, the girl who is the girlfriend of the boy, her friend started jumping into the conversation, and because... Um, because they did not like this other girl making a comment about their friend's boyfriend, they felt like it was their a time to jump in and, and kind of start dogging this girl, start yelling at her, start making these inappropriate comments, and start a cyberbullying war with this one girl. And, and again, that's still not anybody else's place um, to make that kind of a call. So, you know, that's... That's where things start crossing the line a little bit. I mean, you don't you don't want to have have a, an instance where uh, something like that occurs. So you always got to be very smart with with how you want to back up your friend. Um, question number three. Stacy says people talk really big when there's like mi like miles between you. What is what do you think she means by this statement? Okay. Um, and I think you guys could probably figure this one out um, on your own, but um, it's real easy to start talking garbage or talking smack about somebody when it's on a device, when it's on your phone, when it's social media, um, or if it's just behind the, the screen of a computer. It's real easy to do that. Not a lot of times do people want to do that face-to-face. It's just, it's easier because you don't have to be confronted. You don't have to be embarrassed. You don't have to feel like um, you are the lesser of both people. It's just, a, it's it's an easy way. It's the coward's way out is what that is, basically. So, you know, anybody can talk miles between you, but when you're face-to-face, -face, are you really going to, are you really going to show up and try to get that problem resolved right then and there? Okay. Next thing is, in what ways might the online context make the situation worse than if the bully had harassed Stacy offline? Well, you know, it really just kind of depends. Um, you know, we don't really know what um, Stacy's normal life is like offline. We don't know what the girlfriend's life is like online. Um, we, we obviously know that online, a um, bit of a talker, uh, thinks that she has some authority over other people, and, you know, for the most part, you know, is that the same person that she is offline? Maybe she's maybe she's kind, maybe she's sweet and nice, just had a bad day, or maybe that's how she really just does act. Um, so, you know, it's kind of hard to make that kind of a judgment, but, you know, it'd be really easy um, to kind of generalize, you know, term from from our previous uh, lesson, we could generalize that if she acts this way online, that she's probably going to act this way offline as well. Um, and finally, Stacy's mom. Now, here's here's a really good point to make because some of you possibly have been in this position and just don't know how to act or what to do with it. Stacy's mom says that Stacy should call the school and report the incidents. Stacy responds that if if it would just make it worse. Okay, do you think this is true? Why or why not? Well, to be honest, I mean, it, it could go one of both ways. Um, you know, Stacy needs to. She definitely needs to talk to somebody at her school. Make it a teacher, make it a counselor, a principal, assistant principal, somebody that she trusts, somebody that will go and get the information to the right people to make sure this problem gets solved and is nipped in the bud and is just fully dealt with. Um, 
you know, could it make the situation worse? I mean, sure, it, it could. Um, but where does it make it worse? You know, it, it may make it better online, it may not make it better at school, it might make it better at school, but if people are aware that something is going on, then people know how to help you better. People know when they see you two together that you're not supposed to be near each other, um, so it people can people can be better helping you or better serving you knowing that information, so it's always better to err on the side of telling a trusted adult. Now, it's very important for you to determine who that trusted adult is, though. So, if anything from this lesson, you know, th think about this for a second. Who do you trust at Calhoun Middle School? Who is it that you trust? Who is it you feel like you can tell something personal to if it's, if it's a situation like this or if it's something different, somebody else is harassing you? Who can you go to that you honestly trust to take care of the information that you gave? It's a good question. Um, and, and, you know, for the most part, you have a, a great staff of teachers that work at CMS. Any of them would be willing to do whatever it is for you to, to make your life better, to make your middle school experience more pleasurable. Um, there are many teachers there that you will not be able to go talk to who won't take care of you and do what's best for you. So, you might have someone that you like more than another teacher, and that's perfectly fine. That's not going to hurt anybody's feelings, but you do need to know who is somebody that you can trust with these kind of information. Okay? Um, here's what I want to do for part three. Part three, take a second. Um, we have two different case studies that I want you to read over. Um, case study number one, uh, take a second, read that over, and I'll get right back with you. Okay, and we're back. All right, case study number one. It talks about a boy named Eric. Eric gets a lot of pressure at home from his parents to make good grades. Um, the, only, the only problem is Eric does not always make those good test grades. So because of all the pressure that he is receiving and has not been able to um, live up to the standard of excellence at home, um, people are noticing and people are making fun of him. And people are making fun of him through text messages, through phone calls, um, and, and, and saying things to him at school. So, how is this related to bullying? How is this related to cyberbullying? Let's take a look at the questions. Question number one. What forms of cyberbullying did the students use on Eric, and what is your evidence? Okay. In the story, it talked about phone calls and text messages that he would receive. Um, people would call him names. People call him mean things. Um, you know, it doesn't really matter who you are. Nobody has that right. Nobody has the right to make you feel less of a person. No one has the right to call you a name or to make you feel that bad. So, regardless, all of you have made a bad test grade, and it's okay, all right? But that does not mean you have the right to make anybody else feel less of a person because of the bad test grade that you received. Okay? Number two, how do you think Eric feels, and what elements of this situation make him feel this way? I would probably think Eric does not feel so great about himself. Um, he's doing all the studying, he's trying to live up to his parents' expectations, do well for them, and he is not seeing uh, that final product. He's just not getting those good grades. So all of these messages are just not making the situation any better for him. So he's already low enough, and now people are just making him feel even lower at this point. Okay, the third question, do you think Eric should tell his parents about the cyberbullying? Absolutely. No doubt in my mind. Um, and it's a real simple way of telling your parents. Just say, people are bullying me, people are, are picking on me, I don't like how this is making me feel. Well, and then your parents are going to ask, well, what do you mean? How do you, how do you know this? Show them your phone. All you got to do is get your phone out, show them those text messages, show them the phone calls that you have gotten, and, and people are, are going to be able to see that very quickly and easily. Um, and, and you guys know this very, very well. Just because you delete something doesn't mean it really gets deleted. People screenshot, people forward, P 
People email, people push forward, submit it out. There are so many different ways that you can push out a message and it just doesn't go away. Delete does not mean delete. And you guys know that. I've told you that a million times before. Uh, what qualities, number four, what qualities do you think a trusted adult should have? And who are these people in your life? In what ways can a trusted adult actually be an effective? Now, I'm not going to answer this question for you because this is something that I feel like is, is completely your opinion. And, you know, for the most part, you need to be able to answer that because you all trust people in different ways. Um, but I can give you some tips if you're still trying to search for an trusted adult. Um, again, it's trusted. It's somebody you trust. That they're trustworthy. They're not going to go and tell other people people your information. Um, you can tell them a secret. You can tell them information that may be uncomfortable that's going on, but regardless of what it is, they're going to keep your best interest at heart, and they're going to do whatever they can to help you and make you feel safe. And that those are some qualities that hopefully the trusted adult that you might have um, entails. And and again, like I said, most of the teachers at CMS, if not all, all share a quality of being a trusted adult in some form or fashion. You've got some great adults in your life that are, are going to be willing to help you in any kind of situation if it were to come about. Fifth question. If Alexis was the bully, what could school personnel, such as the principal, do to say to Alexis to make her realize that her behavior is wrong? Now, Alexis, again, Alexis is supposed to be the possible popular girl that is there at the school, and you think she might be the one that is starting all these rumors about people. Well, if, again, you've got good info, it's right there on your phone. If you've been seeing those text messages or those calls, take that to your principal. Let the, let the principal do some work, okay? They can investigate. They can interrogate. They can question. They can look at social medias. Uh, there, there are a lot of different platforms that your administrators can take in effort to get to the bottom of the situation. So absolutely 100% go the distance and try to find that out from somebody in charge. And finally, number six, have you ever been a part of or heard of a situation similar to this? If so, share your story without using people's names. I can't help you with that one. That's a personal experience of your own. So jot that information down, um, and then once you are done, if you will take a couple minutes, read case, uh, case study number two, and we'll talk about that one. Okay, and we're back. All right, our final case study that we're going to take a look at, um, this one gets a little gets a little interesting. Uh, case study number two, there are two girls running for student body president. Um, very, very tight race. And one of the girls, uh, I believe the name girl's name was Sarah, Sarah's friends decided to start a social media account, a fake social media account, um, with her running, with the person that she's running against, and the girl's name is Tanya. And apparently the, the school that they attend um, has a very large Asian population. And a lot of what is on this website is, is racist information um, and, and makes it look like Tanya is behind all of this stuff. So this, one, this one's tricky. This one's difficult to handle um, because stuff like this does happen. Um, usually um, from commonsense.org, all the scenarios that they're going to give to you were real scenarios. They may change the names, they may change the location, but these are situations that did take place at some point and it's very difficult to kind of understand because people just do act like this. Um, and I like to believe that we don't act this way at Calhoun all the time, but I mean, nothing would surprise me. So hopefully, hopefully this is something that you're never going to have to experience, but you know, somebody did at one point. So let's take a look at the questions. Uh, first one, what forms of cyberbullying did Sarah's friends use on Tanya, and what is your evidence? Well, again, they created that fake social media account um, with Tanya's name attached to it, and it was just bashing the Asian population. 
And again, the school that they went to had a large Asian population. So when you're trying to get votes to be one of your class presidents, that's going to be really, really tough to do if you're bashing um, a, a specific group of people at your school. Uh, question number two. Do you think there's ever a good reason for impersonating someone else online or creating a profile about them? There's never a good reason. Never, ever a good reason. Um, that, that's falsifying information. You're lying because you've had to create an account that's not about you. It's about somebody else. Um, it's, it's just a straight-up lie. It's, it's, it's being deceitful, one of your words that you've looked at. Um, and it, it's, Would you want somebody doing that about you? It, it, it's just another good thing to think about. Um, that, that's just one of those things. You just don't want to cross into that, into that line of, of hatred and anger. Um, you know, sometimes I understand situations escalate and you just don't know what to do, but this is never an answer. That's just a very mean and cruel thing to do to somebody. Okay, question number three. Do you think Sarah knew what her friends were doing and what is Sarah's responsibility in this? There's a very good chance Sarah knew. Um... But the information in, in our case study does not tell us that she does know one way or the other. Um, it, it would almost be kind of hard to believe that she didn't know what was going on with this. Um, and if, if she were responsible, you know, easily the first thing that needed to, that would need to happen is she would be out of that out of that presidential race at her school very very quickly, um, and and that would just be one of the first forms of punishment that she should receive. Um, it, it's not going to be just that quick and easy and cut off say, oops, sorry, no big deal. Um, there, there's going to be some steeper punishment involved with that as well. Uh, question number four. What do you think the consequences should be for Sarah and her friends if the school does find out? Um, like I said, I mean, she ought to be completely 100% taken out of that school race. Uh, she's probably going to be receiving some kind of in-school or out-of-school suspension. Um it's just it's just that plain and simple. There's really no no question about it, um, how it should be dealt with. It, it's going to be handled pretty harshly. Uh, question number five. If you found out about what happened, um, would this be reason for you to not vote for Sarah if, if you have to think about it, then you really need to be checking out your facts and information. There should be no reason in the world why you would vote for Sarah after she's going to do something like this. Because if she is going to be that kind of crooked of a politician, how can you trust her to do things in the best interest of the school? How to be in the best interest of, of the students, uh, student body? Um, your job as the elected official is to serve the people. And in this case, the people are the students. And if you're not going to be honest with those that you are trying to, to help that you say you are going to, then you can't be trusted to, to do the right kind of job that um, would be upheld of a student body president. And our final question, question number six. Have you ever been a part of or heard of a situation similar to this? If so, share, share the story without using the names of any people. It's the same exact question as the, the, the first case scenario. So again, I can't help you with that. That's just something that you need to write down and tell us about your experience with that. Um, if you haven't had anything like that happen before, it's no big deal. You don't have to put anything down with it. Um, it's just there to, to let you kind of talk about that scenario and, and say that information. But at this time, um, here's what I'm looking for in my grading. You should have completed parts one, part two, and part three. There were information in all three of those parts uh, for you to fill out and to submit. So once you have this whole document done, Turn in the assignment. Please turn it in. I can't grade anything for you if you don't turn it in, guys. Um, still got a lot of people that just aren't doing that or won't do that. I don't know why. Um, again, I take this grade, which is basically a participation grade, and I take your quiz grade and I average them. So if you don't turn this in, that's already 50 points off of whatever your best quiz grade could be. So even if you made 100, if you don't have this turned in, you're down to a 50 already. Please turn this document in. Okay? Um, you should see here in a little bit the quiz. The assessment should be available to you here shortly. Um, again, if you have any questions, please please email me. Please send me a message on, on Google Classroom. I'll be glad to get back with you and help you any way that I can. Um, 
this is going to be the last lesson before spring break. I hope you guys enjoy your spring break. Um, keep practicing your social distancing. I hope you guys stay safe. I hope everything is going very well with you guys. Um, but get through the rest of this week. Take next week off. Actually, have a vacation. Next week is a good week for a vacation. We all could use a vacation right now. This has been very stressful, very, very difficult to go through. But, again, I hope you guys enjoyed your spring break next week. And I will get back to you that week after break. See you guys.